What's going on everybody? It's your boy Just Norm. I hope that your new year is going well so far. Today's video is going to focus on how to export and import inside Cakewalk by BandLab. Let's go. All right, what's going on you all? We're back in Cakewalk by BandLab. Here's another tutorial that will be a full-size tutorial. Uh, that will help you be able to import and export into and out of Cakewalk by BandLab. All right, let's get right into it. All right, first things first, I have what's called my 500 sub Christmas thing. Shout out for allowing me to make it to 500 subs. Those that have subscribed to my channel, thank you so much. Uh, so I created this song and I hope to share it at Christmas Day, but that never did happen. Um, but let me let you hear what it sounds like because we're going to try to export this project in different formats. All right, so let's play it first so you can hear what it sounds like. And it's pretty much the same. Um, I'm gonna add some more to that later on, but for right now, it's just kind of like a eight bar loop for the most part. Um, so we're not even talking about production. We're not talking about doing anything with the tracks here and stuff like that, mixing or anything. This is a totally different tutorial. If you need help with mixing or producing or putting together the music or finding the right sounds, definitely check out some of my other videos, uh, which will be linked in the description below. So I have these tracks and there's a few different things that I can do. First, I can export the tracks straight like they are. You know, if I don't need to do anything else to them, uh, what I like to do is just so I know I'm getting everything, I'll double click on it. Let's start with this one, double click it. All right, and then it, it should make sure that everything is highlighted. All right, if everything is highlighted, that's good. That's what you want now. I have the export tool up here. It's already on my toolbar. So I could do it from here. All right. I can export to BandLab if I want to do that. I can do audio. I can do other. I can do presets. I can do advanced. All right. Another way you can get to export is going to file. Oops. File, export. And then if you want to do audio, let's start with audio first. So if I'm exporting this audio, then this is meaning that I want to make sure that this is set because I'm getting ready to upload this song to the internet, to SoundCloud. Uh, if I'm using DistroKid, I'm getting ready to send the song off to them. Or if I'm sending it to someone that I want to master or mix it even further, then I need to make sure that I do this option. Uh, if you want to straight audio. Um, now, you've got different formats you can do. You can do WAVE. Uh, which is wave is what we typically use on your CD format. So if you want to do that, that's perfect wave. I would suggest to do out of anything because it's going to give you the true quality of whatever you're sending. Um, but if you wanted to do something and you're just trying to listen to it in your car, maybe you're trying to make sure your mix is cool. You might not need to do wave because it might take up too much space. You can do it with MP3. Uh, you could do it AIF, you know, which is Apple. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways that you can export for as audio goes. The sample rate. What do we want our sample rate to be set at? Well, this project was done at 48,000 hertz. All right. So 48 kilohertz, basically. If I want to keep it there, that's fine. But keep in mind that if you're putting this on a CD or if you're putting it on, you know, Spotify or Apple Music or any other platform that's streaming, it's going to be mastered in 44.1. So um, you might as well just go ahead and put in 44.1. It's not going to lose any quality right now. But if you want to keep it in 48, just know that later on you're going to have to master it down to 44.1, which is CD quality. Um, so I can put 44.1, 16 bit depth is what I need. All right, it's set on 32. If you were dealing with 
So if you're mixing for movie score, or you're trying to make a film or something like that, then in that case, you might keep it at a higher bit depth. But for a CD or for music, just for listening, we want to keep it in 16. There's a bunch of different options over here, rectangular, triangular. Without going into all of this specifics, because we're trying to keep this thing simple, just keep it on triangular for now. Uh, they actually do make a difference in the sound, uh, but we want to keep it there. What to export. So you have to decide what do you want to export? Are you just doing the tracks? Do you want the tracks through the entire mix? You want the, just the buses or the hardware outputs? I like to keep it on entire mix. All right. Keep it on entire mix. If that way I'm good with that. Make sure that you also give your project a name. So let's say 500 tests. I'm just going to call it 500 tests. All right. Make sure that you know where it's exporting to. Maybe I don't want it to export there. But for now, I'll keep it there. That's fine. I'll keep it there. Uh, project folders. I can open this up and check for sure where it is. It's in Cakewalk Projects. 500 sub ex audio export. So for the range, this is a really cool feature because say you don't want to do the entire project. You just want to do a certain time period. So I can do the entire project, um, which you notice now everything is unchecked. And the reason why is because when I selected everything, it made it a time selection. But if I wanted to just do the entire project, I can just keep it there. And I know it starts at measure one, it ends at measure 18, all right? And I can check right here. Yep, it's measure 18, so that's fine. It's going to include everything that's within that project. And then I press export. You're gonna notice that the audio is gonna mix at the bottom and it should let you know at the bottom that it's successful. I mean, at the top, it's gonna to say that it's mixing and at the bottom it should say it's successful. All right, once it's successful, then I know that I'm good to go for Z part. Now, if I want to, let's try exporting it as a different option. All right. Now, there are some other options that are grayed out right now. One is called video. And the reason why is because I don't have any video on this uh, MIDI groove clip. And that's because I don't have any MIDI groove clips added in. But if I did, then I can export those. OMF is going to be your go to source for output. If you are planning on mixing this or sending it to someone that has a different type of platform, if they don't have Cakewalk by BandLab, say they have Pro Tools. If they have Pro Tools or if they have Nuendo or some other type of DAW, whatever platform they have, you can export it where it'll include everything that you have here. And this is what's really cool about it. Okay, so first off, we name it. I'm going to keep it 500 sub Christmas. There's two different versions of OMF. There's OM version one and there's version two. Version one is going to be for those applications that are older. Okay. Say for instance, um, I don't know, maybe if I was going back to Cakewalk Sonar or something and I wanted to send it back to Sonar, uh, then I can do the OM version one. Or if I was going to an older version of Cubase, then I can send it to that. But if I'm going to something that's more current, like around the time of this software, then OMF version two should work. I would suggest saving it in both, just in case you're sending files to someone and the first one doesn't work right. All right, audio packaging. You got embed audio with OMF. This is very important that you have this check because Say if I had vocals on here, I do have some audio stems, some samples that came from Splice. Um, I've got contact and a few other things on here. But I want to make sure that all the audio that I have here is included. So like if I had, I don't know, 15 tracks for my vocals and I had the lead part and I had everything mixed the way I wanted it mixed, I want to make sure I include that. So make sure that you have that checked. Now that you have this set, another option that you can have set is to include archived tracks. For instance, if I have some tracks that I archived, meaning that I am reducing the memory that's being used by basically hiding the track. It's still there, but it's not active. Um, you can include those tracks. I don't have any archived tracks on this one, so I'm not really worried about it. 
two options to write. You can write in Wave or AIF, which once again, which is dealing with Apple. All right, so I would suggest doing it in Wave, all right? And then I'll press Save. All right, so now I've got that export out the way. And now I've got my standard MIDI file, so I can do this as a MIDI. And I would suggest doing MIDI format one, okay? All right, then I've got that version. Pretty, pretty simple, right? And then we have the ultimate track template, which I've talked about once before, that I could save this as a template that I can pull up whenever I need to. Um, so say, for instance, I had you know 16 tracks set up and I had everything labeled, had pictures on everything, then this would be great for that. All right, then I can just pull it up and every time I work with that template, it's already there. All right, this is exporting. Now, if you want to import, let's close this out. I'll save it. Let's go to a new project. All right, let's do empty project. And let's go to import. Okay, so I'm in import audio. And let me find some audio that I can import real quick. All right. Here's something called test YouTube. And I think this is from another project. So, but I can go ahead and import that. I just click on it and I press open. And then once I press that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that and that's wow. <laughs> Uh, it was a little while ago. So if you know what video that came from, then you, you you might share that laughter with me. But I imported that track, all right? Let's see, I can do another type of import. If I had an audio CD in my drive, I could import that. I don't really use CDs anymore, so. But if you do, that would be great if you were trying to, like, I don't know, import your favorite CD in. If I had a video that I wanted to import, I can do that as well. Let me go into my, got to figure out where everything is though first. Let's see. We can import, hmm, well, let's import, well, let's import this video. All right. Okay. It's nothing unfamiliar. Nothing difficult. So it's my just a norm thing. Uh, I don't know if you all have ever seen this actual real video. I normally just play clips of it inside my video, but um, I made this a little while back to show exactly uh, who I am and what I do. So this video comes in, the video part comes up here, all right? And the audio for the video comes down at the bottom. So then that way I can do whatever I want with it. Now, if I go to try to export I can export it as a video, go up here to export, and now I see the option to export it as a video, and then I can do that, and I can do it in Windows Media or MPEG or YouTube Publisher, whichever. So that's a cool feature if you need to do that. Import MIDI. Now, if I had some MIDI, I don't know if I got any MIDI in here or not. Um, I don't have any MIDI off the top of my head, but if I had a MIDI track, it would be here somewhere and then, or wherever you may have it saved at, and then you can import MIDI into your project and then BandLab project. Now I don't have any BandLab projects saved on here as well, but if you use BandLab, the software itself, or the online tool, then definitely, if you have any of those exported from BandLab saved here, you can import them right into Cakewalk. All right, if you have any questions about importing or exporting, definitely hit me up in the comments below. Love you all, peace.